Philadelphia Flyers three. The only goal in that third period came at 342. It was a goal the Oilers wouldn't need. Gretzky's second of the game from Glenn Anderson and Mark Messier, and that was the final tally of the game. Our mobile player of the game tonight, one goal, two assists, always a main man for the Oilers on defense. No question about his performance tonight, Charlie Huddy. Charlie, this was a complete reversal from the last game where the Oilers played well in the first and faded in the second and third. Tonight you played, uh, I'd say, not your best first period, but in the second and third you really shut down Philadelphia. Yeah, that's for sure. We uh, we came out a little bit slow at the start, and I'm sure they realized that uh, last game we got those two quick goals on them, and they wanted to come out and have a good start, and they did. They worked hard, and... Uh, we got a couple of quick goals on us. We had some bad plays, you know, in their end and coming back. We didn't have guys picking up guys in our end, and they got uh, two quick goals on us. Uh, Charlie, I'd have to rank your goal as perhaps the most important of this game. We're going to go back with the uh, scoreboard clock reading less than two minutes to go. Charlie Huddy will get the puck, and you just ripped this one. Yeah, that's for sure. It was a great pass by uh, Paul Coffey, and I just fired it at the net, and we usually, uh, on the power play, we've been having time at the points to... Uh, let the shot go, and we've been trying to get guys in front to screen the goalie, and it was fortunate enough to get by him. Well, that came at 18:23, and after the first period of play, it was 3-2, and of course, the Philadelphia Flyers would never score again. Charlie, A, did you sense a weakness in Pelly Lindbergh, and B, did you sense the Flyers were tired? Uh, I guess maybe Pelly maybe got a little bit tired. We had a lot of shots, and I guess the sky report on him is if he has a lot of shots, he gets a little bit tired, and he doesn't have those water bottles, I guess, that he... <laughs> Realize that he needed and getting dehydrated and it does it does tire you out somewhat and uh, I guess that had a little bit to do with it. What about the Flyers as a team though? Uh, I think they did get a little bit tired maybe near the end. Our guys started to skate well in the second and third period and when you have guys like Mark Messi and uh, Glenn Anderson, Yari Curry skating at you all the time and they're only using four defensemen, it uh, it makes it pretty tough on a defenseman back there. You don't have much time and their uh, guards are taking the body very well. What were you most proud of tonight that the Oilers were able to do? Well, I have to say uh, not not getting uh, rattled when we were down two goals, holding our own and just uh, fighting back. And when we got close, we didn't uh, try to open it up and try to get that goal really early. And then, again, when it was tied, we just held our own and we waited, we waited it out. And uh, we were very patient and we were fortunate enough to get a big goal. Charlie, yesterday, uh, I'm assuming you were at the NHL luncheon uh, at the convention center. Glenn Sather said, not that we didn't respect the Islanders last year, but we're afraid of the Philadelphia Flyers. What do the Flyers have that the Islanders didn't have last year? Well, I think uh, probably they don't have as many injuries as the Islanders did last year. They had quite a few injuries, and uh, this year the Flyers, they have a lot of young guys, and they realize that they're in the Stanley Cup Finals, and they're working very hard out there, and, uh, you know, they're taking the body well, and especially the first game in Philadelphia, they played a great game, and we realized that uh, these young guys, they wanted to beat us, and you know, there's no way the guys wanted to give it up and we just said we're all going to have to outwork them along the boards be able to take the hit and you know and hit them back and try to tire them out all right charlie one goal two assists great game and a big win thank you thanks so. charlie huddy of the edmonton oilers our mobile player of the game and fearing for being accorded that honor we'd like him to receive a handsome multicolored windbreaker from toyota lines fine line of genuine toyota sportswear and we're going to give him a kodak disc camera just pull it out of your pocket and it's ready aim shoot and smile because you're going to get it with the kodak disc and so the Edmonton Oilers at home now have a chance to win the cup at home. A 5-3 win and a three games to one lead in the 1985 Stanley Cup. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. The technology behind it gives this driver engine protection he can depend on. And this driver. And this driver. driver. Mobile synthetic oil technology. There's no finer engine protection on earth or anywhere else. I like things that last. This old car runs like a watch. My house is over 96 years old. Been married to Enid 23 years. Here's the first new thing I bought in eight years. Nine. It's a Honda lawnmower. Overhead valve design. Real durable. I bought it because it'll last. Like my dog. 12 years old. Known Fred forever. This shirt belonged to my dad. The Honda lawnmower. It could be the last lawnmower you ever buy. At one point in tonight's game, the Flyers led 3-1, to one, but they would never score again. The Oilers with four unanswered goals, and they now lead this 
Best of seven Stanley Cup Championship Series, three games to one. Now, the Oilers came into tonight's game knowing that if they won tonight, they'd have a chance to win this cup at home. A loss here at home, and they'd never play again at the Northlands with a chance to win the cup. That game on Thursday, the next game, game five, will be the last game the Oilers play here because of the 2-3-2 format in this year's Stanley Cup Championship. Mike Liud is with me in the studio. Mike, the uh, goaltending situation with Philadelphia was, uh, of course, something of note tonight. What else about the game impressed you? Well, I, I, what impressed me is what Charlie Huddy talked about, Edmonton not panicking, not getting really too far out of their game plan and coming back, getting a goal and making the most of it. But I think what you have to uh, really realize is the fact that they uh, have lost uh, Philadelphia, that is. They're not, not their composure, but they're tired and they're, and they're just not uh, the same team that we saw in game one. And I think that that's going to have a profound effect in game uh, five on, on Thursday. The Flyers came out of the locker room tonight with so much energy. It was amazing. I mean, it, was, it seemed like a different team in comparison to the one we saw here in Game 3. But then, as you said, the energy reserves go low, and then you start missing passes that you normally make. You start going offside when you normally don't. All those things go wrong. Yeah, no question. I think that uh, one of the two things that I look for are the offsides. Philadelphia, very disciplined club, and they started to go offside a lot. And also, what, they, uh, were, what was happening was that they were falling down. And any time that somebody falls down, there's no real reason. You just bump a little bit and the player happens to go down. It, it's an indication that he's getting weak in the legs. And he just doesn't have that strength to, to go that extra mile, as it were. And uh, I think that's what you're seeing in, in the series. Edmonton's just uh, too much, too strong. All right. We'll have some more down here. But for the moment, let's go back to Al Albert and Gary Green. Philadelphia Flyers were up 3-1 to one in this game. They certainly had their chance, let it get away. And you're talking about what may be going through the mind of uh, Mike Keenan. Well, when you're up 3-1 to one against this Edmonton team, that's exactly where you want to be. I think that maybe Mike Keenan might second-guess himself now. Does he say, should I have reverted back to playing a very disciplined, defensive style of game that's since we had them up 3-1? to one? I mean, you can second-guess yourself to death. The point is, I think that... The game plan was established. Philadelphia came out. They were playing aggressively. They were getting in on top of the Oilers, and they were forcing them to make mistakes. That's the only way you can beat the Edmonton Oilers. But it seems that however you play, they're going to find a way to beat you. You know, in the last two games, the Oilers have only one goal on a five-on-five -five situation, the regular uh, shift. In game number three, they scored four goals on a four-on-four, -four and or rather three goals. And uh, here tonight, they score uh, four goals on a power play. Well, I think the power play for the Edmonton Oilers was, was certainly extremely good tonight, but I think it also showed that the Philadelphia Flyers are getting pretty weary in their own end zone. When you have to play against the Edmonton Oilers in your own end zone, because that's what you're talking about when they're on the power play, then you get caught in situations whereby you have to use all the energy possible. You've got to move quickly. Um, speed is of essence, and that is when the difference really shows between the Philadelphia Flyers and the Edmonton Oilers, I think, and uh, Brad Marsh is getting tired out there. Crossman and Howe have seen an awful lot of ice time. They've got to be getting pretty tired. Tired, And overall, even the forwards look like they're slowing down just a pace or two. Speaking of getting tired, the goaltenders. Grand Fuhr will be playing his 30th straight game on Thursday night. He was uh, sensational here tonight. And uh, Pelly Lindbergh pulled for the second straight game. What's up for game number five? Who's in goal? Well, that's a, a question that I guess Mike Keenan's going to have to answer. Do you go back with Bobby Froze? He played pretty well when he has come in, and certainly tonight in the third period, you can't blame Froze. He let in the, the one goal, but after that, he made some pretty good saves. Do you go with a hunch and go with Bobby Froze and say, well, look, maybe the team will really respond to him. He's been an excellent goaltender for us during the course of the season until he got injured, and he hasn't really been utilized much, so you know he's fresh. Do you go with him, or do you go with the guy that really got you here, Pelly Lindbergh? I think if it came down to my decision, you got to go with what got you here, and Pelly Lindbergh got them here. Well, last year, the Edmonton Oilers split their first two games in New York against the Islanders, then came back here to Edmonton, won three in a row to win the Cup in five games. Now this year, Al Troutwig, they're trying to see if history repeats, splitting the first two games in Philadelphia, and Thursday night, they go for their third straight here in Edmonton and for their second consecutive Cup. And Al, as we look ahead to that game on Thursday night, we really don't know what Mike Keenan is going to do. He's made some surprising moves. But whenever you get down in a series, it's up to a team to say, okay, let's take it one period, one game at a time. And that leadership's got to come from the coaches. What would you like to hear the coaches say for Philadelphia? 
Well, I don't think there's anything that they're going to say that's going to make that much of a difference, or these guys haven't already heard. But they're going to have to stress the fact that there is no tomorrow, let's use a cliche, and, and the fact that we can't win the games in Philadelphia until we win this game tonight. And to stress the fact that if we do win this game, even though we're still down uh, a game and we still have to win both of them in Philadelphia, it is our building and, and we are going home to, uh, to our, our, our place. We have something to play for. Okay, so the Philadelphia Flyers know one thing. Either way, they'll be going home on Thursday night. They can either go home happy with some more games to come, or they can go home sad. That'll be Thursday night here on USA. We thank you for joining us for tonight's Game 4. The final score once again, the Edmonton Oilers 5 and the Philadelphia Flyers 3. The Oilers on the verge of their second straight cup. The Stanley Cup Championship on USA has been brought to you by Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1985. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. By the Stroh Brewery Company, Brewers of Stroh's, Old Milwaukee, and other fine beers. By Mobile One, Synthetic Motor Oil. You can't buy better engine protection. By Armor All. It's science, but it works like magic. And by Ford and your local Ford dealer who invite you to drive the new Ford Escort. Have you driven a Ford lately? Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Championship takes place right here at the Northlands Coliseum on Thursday night. It starts at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and the mission for Philadelphia